line. So Avinash is somebody who straddles both sides of the fence. He has deep experience in strategy and as well as effective but creative campaigns. So you can imagine what he brings to the table. I can tell you what else he brings to the table is a sharp focus on outcomes and how to achieve them. Now you can imagine he's a vice president marketing of Thomas Cook and has been for six years. And he's had to deal with travel during the pandemic, which as you know, is a complete washout. So it's going to be really interesting to understand not only what Thomas Cook did, but what other companies around the world and even other governments around the world are doing to survive this sector. So ladies and gentlemen, fasten your seatbelts for a very interesting session by Avinash Janjire. Over to you, Avinash. Thank you, David. I think that is to illustrate. I didn't know you made it sound really good. So I didn't know about that myself. But thank you very much for this great introduction. So pressure is really on me now. <laughs> okay, just give me a second. I have a very short uh, presentation. Frankly, I don't know. Is the format interactive? Do we have Q&A or is this just going to be a session? Because uh, frankly, I didn't get to have a chat with you before. So I thought maybe just quickly, if you can tell me how the format is going to work. We have a whole hour. Mm -hmm. So you can take your time giving the background to what you're presenting. You can take up to 30 to 40 minutes to present. 30 minutes also is fine. We will be taking questions from the audience as well. And we will also interact with you. So it's both interactive as well as you have a chance to present um, the thinking behind what all you've done and the outcomes that it has achieved. Sure. Great. Uh, so I'll begin without much ado. Uh, just give me a second while I just share my screen. Do you see this, David? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So uh, as David said, the context, I think I'm going to talk a little bit about how at Thomas Cook we are battling the impact of, of uh, the pandemic on our business. Obviously, I think uh, almost every business has seen, a, uh, seen an impact, impact, at least the first four or five or six months uh, since beginning of February or March. Uh, but I think travel was probably the worst hit. Um, and 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 I, I've actually been in the business uh, of travel only for about five or six months, uh, but pe sorry, five or six years. But uh, people who've been around for a long time uh, keep saying, and actually, there's no uh, there's no doubt about the fact that this is probably the worst ever time for the business of travel. Uh, again, people who've been here for long enough, they quote examples of how when 9/11 happened. Uh, while it happened in the US, uh, the confidence in travel overall, confidence in flying itself had actually had a little bit of a hit uh, during that time. And almost uh, all travel businesses across the world had seen a 30, 40 percent impact overall. I mean, that and that people quote as the worst thing, uh, worst impact that any travel business had in the history before COVID. So you can imagine how what COVID has actually done to us. Uh, so I'm going to just take you through a very quick slide just showing you the the trend of how much impact that it actually has had uh, ignore the numbers on the left but essentially the blue line is the the demand for travel as a category and this is a combination of the uh, google searches this is a combination of uh, the traffic on our website which is uh, a direct uh, which is the direct traffic which is organic traffic which is a reflection of people's interest in travel as a category or holidays as a category so the blue line is essentially the month on month demand trend as i said combination of multiple factors of 2019 and the red line is essentially the month on month trend for 2020 um, as you see starting march the demand literally fell over a cliff i mean it was down by almost 80 90% uh, and you'd probably be aware, most people would be aware that travel or holidays uh, in India is largely a seasonal business because bulk of the travel happens between uh, March and June. It's largely also coincides with the school holidays for children. And, and in India, uh, across multiple states, uh, schools uh, actually take holidays on multiple uh, months. I mean, it's south is very different, west it is different, and Delhi it is very, or north side it is very different, which is why I think the bulk of the business happens between March and June, which is when the COVID hit us. And as you see, uh, the demand was down by almost 90% during this whole 
peak months of uh, of march to uh, june uh, and that is what we've been trying to deal with uh, though a last two or three months fortunately since the unlockdown started happening we've seen a little bit of revival and i'll talk about how what we are trying to do even to improve the sentiment because it's not just about uh, about whether it is open or not uh, it is the amount of fear that is this pandemic has instilled into the consumer's mind that even if even after uh, states are open some of the international destinations are open people are not thronging back to holidays because of the kind of blow uh, in confidence or the fear that the pandemic is instilled in consumers mind so it's going to be a long haul for us to bring back that confidence and, and there are uh, there are a host of measures that we are doing the entire industry is trying to do but as a leader in the holidays category it's we are also taking the onus on us how to actually uh, start the dialogue or start the conversation about travel and uh, and holidays again and uh, and uh, in the next 25 to 30 minutes i'll quickly talk about what we are what all we are doing for that uh going ahead uh can you see this and uh, are you am i audible uh, david all good all good yeah very clear i'm sorry i'm actually just staring at the screen and my presentation which is i'm, I'm just for reassurance i'm just asking uh, so uh, whenever there's an interruption maybe you can tell me uh, if anything is going wrong yeah, yeah absolutely yeah uh, so uh, we've been talking to our consumers of almost in the last 6 months since march almost on a daily basis uh, to our Uh, existing customers potential customers uh, and trying to understand what their consumer uh, concerns are uh, we being primarily an international or uh, travel operator uh, pre covid most co- common consumer concerns earlier were mujhe wahan pe indian khana milega kya because we are again as i said largely international so people were concerned about will i get indian food will i get my own taste of food will i get uh, 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 south indian meal will i get a maharashtrian meal will i get a gujarati meal uh, so food was one of the biggest concerns after that maybe things like i am not very comfortable i do, language problem was a big barrier uh, especially in some european countries uh, some of the asian countries as well uh, so la- that that was another second big concern that people would talk about whenever they were actually talking of booking or uh, thinking of going on a holiday uh, the third thing was most people wanted we are not a diy society we've always wanted to get everything done for me so people would say i don't even want to book a cab once i land there can you do everything end to end for me once i land there so these were some of the consumers concerns uh, pre covid but last 6 months pandemic in that have has completely changed and uh, now what here are things that uh, whenever we are talking or doing our research or doing dip six studies these are the concerns that people are saying i am worried about my safety hence i don't want to travel uh, uh, i mean i don't know what will happen uh, i'm it worries me so i i'm not even thinking of travel that's the first big and biggest stop rated concern it's obviously not a surprise at all uh, the second things people are what our research also shows that last 6 months people are actually fed up uh, sitting at home being locked down not being able to step out doing their uh, daily chores uh out of home uh, so people are fed up even if i intend to travel as a consumer people are saying what if things go wrong what if the destination and there were things like what if the destination that i am going to uh, has a second lapse or becomes a containment zone that destination shuts down the place where i am staying suddenly because it was very till about two months ago it was very fluid or flu- very dynamic today one area was a green zone next day it was a uh, red zone containment zone all of that was there So there were lots of ifs, ifs and buts even so even if i intended to travel there were a lot of issues that customers would uh, uh, be, that they uh, concerns that people had on their mind uh then obviously i mean this is again universal to most businesses uh, people have suffered uh, uh, pay cuts small and medium businesses have had a, a cash flow challenge obviously everybody is going through a little bit of an uncertainty when it comes to their regular income so people said i am stretched for cash uh even if i'm thinking of a holiday i'll need some flexibility and that was that came as a very big concern third even if we solved the first three concerns people said i still need some confidence or or inspiration from others or i'll wait and watch i don't want to be the first person to start traveling immediately uh and the last thing in spite of all of these people said they might still need a further incentive further nudge to buy again from them so these were some of the concerns 
we and these were the top obviously there is a long list going further but these were some of the top concerns that we as a travel operator or travel category wanted to address before even we start seeing the revival in the business uh what we also noticed i mean this is not a concern but this is this actually played a huge role in how we are actually starting to turn the sentiment around travel uh noticing this change of shift of behavior uh, earlier pre covid as a travel category not just us i think this must be true for most uh, travel businesses most of them were largely especially people who have a high e-commerce uh, contribution and we are we are probably one of the uh, uh, players which has a equal combination of a large retail uh, operation plus as well as a, a very healthy e-commerce contribution as well so we were largely dependent on google to help us with all our demand contribution uh, so a large percentage of of uh, people who came onto the site came via a google search obviously they came via uh, direct and other mediums as well but because there was not much demand for the category the, the amount of time that people were spending on google actually moved at least for us and this might be true for short term i don't think this is a long term impact people will obviously start searching on google when the demand or the sentiment comes back to normalcy but we saw a trend that the shift of power from a travel influence or travel engagement point of view moved from uh, google to all the social platforms and and we use this inside or we use this this knowledge uh, as you go ahead you'll you'll see how we try to use this to again bring back the conversation back uh, about, on travel again via social media platforms uh, so if these were the uh, this was, so so far i mean this was the problem statement that i i showcased consumer concerns lack of demand uh, people not searching for travel all of that was there so what were we doing what were what have we been doing in the last 3 or 4 months since the especially since uh, i think july or so when the lockdown phase 1 started happening uh and i'll take you through some of the each uh, steps that we've taken uh, to address each of these uh, problem statements that i spoke about so far so the most important thing because as i said the biggest thing or worry was for people about my safe, uh, about safety so what we did is we actually uh, tied up uh, with apollo hospitals so we went to apollo hospital which is one of the largest health healthcare brand in the country uh we actually huddled with them along with them we audited our entire consumer journey right from the time consumers entered our store to book a holiday uh, uh, from that time to when they reached the airport for their uh, to go on their holiday from airport when they took a cab or a, or a transport to go to their hotel and from hotel to sightseeing and then on their way back we audited this entire journey along with the apollo hospitals and put together a very stringent safety protocols at every step uh, safety and hygiene protocols at every step and created a exhaustive uh, program called as safe travel program we called it as a short uh, and uh, and created a video out of it we I, I, is there on youtube maybe we don't have enough time to show that video it's a it's a little bit of a 4 minute video because uh, we wanted to assure consumers of all the steps that we are taking throughout this journey so that we could confidently go back and tell them that whenever you travel with thermoscope you are actually safe and this is what we are doing for your safety and we created a video out of it to showcase the entire journey and the steps taken and this was led by our chairman himself mr madhavan menon who actually gave an assurance to customer via this safe travel program sek sek post lock lockdown or when you start take your first holiday post covid i assure you that you are you will be safe because these are the things that we are doing so this was the first thing that we went and did and we were one of the first few brands who actually took that positioning and actually went it seriously because if we went and committed it people would probably not take, uh, take it so seriously which is why we got it certified by by a healthcare brand and i think that has played a huge part in actually building a little bit of travel and and i'll show you what how it is probably giving us some returns in the last 3 or 4 months uh, since travel is at least crawling back to normalcy um, the second thing was that's sorry very, you said you were saying something very, david yeah i said that's a very insightful move in terms of tying yeah. up with the polo hospital yeah yeah i mean because we realized that i mean if i went and said i i am a travel brand i know how to create a travel package or take you on a holiday i don't understand safety i didn't never 
we've never dealt with the situation like that so we actually went into the fact that we actually don't understand it like a novice we went into that and got guidance from apollo and which is why we built this whole program together and i think that that has helped us to a great extent and 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 most importantly i think nobody in the industry has done that in any ways uh so yeah uh, so uh, the next thing that was that we were also seeing especially uh, and this is happening from july onwards as i said uh, july was when the first unlock down started happening the regulations from every state to state were changing almost on a very dynamic every day basis this was leading to a lot of confusion amongst customers so even say in in august if i wanted to travel to go i would not know what do i need do i need a a test to be done to enter goa do i need uh, to be quarantined when i come back from goa uh, do i need an e pass to enter goa if i am going by a road or or any other mode of transport and these regulations change from from uh, state to state so even if there was an intent for travel by consumers there was so much confusion about it that, and there was not a single repository for people uh, to get this information because i mean as i said it was changing from state to state so i would actually literally have to go from one place to other to even get all these things on board as a consumer so what we did was we introduced something called a safe holiday helpline and the name itself is self explanatory but the whole idea was people who had the intent of travel but had this confusion we gave them assurance that it's okay if you don't travel with us the whole idea was we will because uh, we had all this information and we are in the business of travel we were monitoring this on a day to day basis and created a knowledge management tool uh, where all this information across the all states and international destinations was was fed and then the agents were trained to help customers take a conscious call every time when they were thinking of a holiday so this again had a, a had went to a, to a great extent helped us build that some amount of confidence but because we started getting a lot of calls from confused customers uh, and at the whole idea was at some point of time if you have called me of asking for a guidance on a safe holiday at some point of time maybe whenever you think of taking holiday you'll hopefully come back to us that was the whole intent but we went into it with no holds barred it was not led it was not the consultancy was not against a purchase but it was just open and free for all so this was the uh, more second most important move that we did uh, this was again most of this what i am talking about was launched in july and we continue to practice this and talk about it on an ongoing basis during every sales conversation that we have or every campaign that we do this these are all all these pegs are are actually an important part of that communication whenever we are communicating or engaging with our consumers uh we spoke about the concerns that were there we there we had to actually come back with a solution for each of these even if we had any hope to get consumers to travel again so uh, i am just going to quickly take you through what are the things that we are doing we, i spoke about the assure program which addressed the concern of of safety uh, to a great extent because again it was backed by somebody like uh, apollo hospitals what if things go wrong uh, what we did was we also uh, tied up with a couple of insurance companies uh, and made sure that every package that we sold even if it was a two night stay in goa every package included a covid insurance cover in it so god forbid if something went wrong uh, while you were on, on a holiday you it would take care of all your expenses and that there was a little huge reassurance that you were covered in a way so this was over and above the travel insurance because your normal travel insurance would not cover covid so we made sure that we bought a covid insurance cover and built it into the package so god forbid if things go wrong you are actually covered from that point of view so we made sure that every package was was covid included the third thing that we did because we realized that obviously cash flow was a challenge for almost everybody from organizations or small businesses to consumers uh, we went on with a promise uh, where we said you whenever you book two days before till the holiday we will give you free cancellation no questions asked you we will give you guaranteed refunds the cancellation is completely free there are no cancellation charges uh, you can either cancel or either reschedule if you have any issues with that so there was a complete flexibility given to you and if you were booking in advance you could book with a, a very small deposit amount i mean if you for example if i was in august and i wanted to travel during dashera or diwali i could book with as little as say 5000 rupees 
uh, and with the freedom of free cancellation till five days before the or two days in the domestic holiday earlier it was uh, of two days before the holiday now we've actually now that things have started relaxing we've that the duration is now a week uh, so but we still give free cancellation one uh, one week before the holiday and obviously you can reschedule whether we, whenever you want and obviously there were guaranteed refunds and all the the fourth thing that people said i don't want to be the first one to talk about i will i will might as well wait and watch so and i'll show you this how we are trying to do this but we have actually created heroes about uh, heroes out of our first few customers uh, because they became our became our ambassadors or they became their ambassadors of their first holiday post covid and they started talking about how it when they travel with thomas cook because of the steps that we've taken uh, and the destination that they are uh, they are going to it's perfectly safe and they spoke about it and i'll show you a few examples of how we did that and the last thing was obviously in spite of doing all of this people still needed an an incentive or a nudge to do that so we introduced a whole uh, lot of packages and we called it as crazy deals because they were genuinely crazy um it and it was also because of the fact that the whole industry had gone through a, a really bad patch most of the hotels uh, were actually being sold uh, at a very uh, attractive prices so the deals were genuinely crazy we actually there was very little to be done by us because the whole ecosystem sort of contributed to bring it back together so we introduced a range of of packages which we called as uh, crazy deals we introduced a holiday card where we uh, it was essentially a prepaid card where we actually gave an instant 15% cash back whenever you bought a holiday using our uh, holiday card uh, we introduced a zero interest uh, emi scheme as well where uh, if you don't want to pay at one go you could actually take a loan and it was a absolutely interest free obviously nobody gives an interest free loan so as thomas cook we were absorbing the interest but for customers it was absolutely interest free and plus we also tied up with uh, uh, india's largest loyalty platform called payback where via payback you'd probably get additional uh, uh, loyalty points as well so uh, the whole idea was we tried to give absolute apart from the safety and security concerns we also tried and gave a lot of flexibility and security for customers and also created a lot of uh, financial advantages of buying a holiday with thomas cook post covid uh, and hence i mean this is this is how we have actually our communication has been in the last uh, few months where we said whenever we post covid if you are traveling with thomas cook we called it as zero, zero worry holidays because everything was taken care of assured was our safe travel program insured was your uh, insurance was taken care of which included covid insurance and secured was absolute flexibility with uh, uh, no uh, cancellation charges free rescheduling etc etc one thing which was also which we latest and this is a latest addition this was not there earlier this we introduced only a week ago where again as part of the safe travel program uh, and as part of our alliance with apollo clinics again if something goes wrong while you are on a holiday we gave you an a facility of a 24/7 doctor on call so for example if you are traveling to himachal goa or dubai or maldives and 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 you maybe uh, uh, fall sick or or you have any medical emergency you could call an indian doctor because the other problem that people usually had people like to talk to a doctor which where they are comfortable with so we also provided a doctor on call facility which is again backed by apollo clinics Uh, so that also again is actually helping us this just in, as i said it it's introduced only a week ago but it's already helping us build that again uh, consumer confidence there are essentially almost everything is taken care of from safety uh, to your financial trouble everything is uh, is taken care of and that's what that's why our holidays are now called as zero worry holidays from thomas cook and we try to use this uh, communication across everything that we are doing and every piece of communication we try to uh talk about these conversations the conversation is about assured the conversation is about insured and and secured and we try to do this in every piece of communication i've just put together some screenshots of of our social communication because everything that we are doing essentially is doing social first because that's where the conversation conversations about travel are happening more and more people are spending time time on social and social is now the, our lead medium of communicating and engaging with our with our consumers so so i've just put together examples of all initiatives that i'm showcasing all the screenshots are of live uh, posts or live communication that we've done via via our 
social channels uh, interesting so yeah uh, so going forward uh, when we did this also so there was a three pronged approach that we did uh, when we how we wanted to get people to travel again or at least talk start talking about travel again uh, so the three prong was inform inspire and then initiate so essentially inform and i'll talk about each of these in in a, a little more detail uh, as we go along uh, so essentially inform meant because i spoke about the fact that there was a lot of confusion i didn't know whether i would need any i have no i didn't know whether goa was open i don't know whether himachal or uttarakhand were open so whenever on a on a very regular almost on a real time basis every time there was an update from a state tourism or the or the state government we used our social platforms to communicate that with the customer like for example you see uh, the 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 post on the left is about uttarakhand is now lifted all its restrictions it is now you don't even need an e pass there is no covid certification needed we would use social to inform customers about it uh, the the one on the left middle is when uh, obviously dubai was open by then but you we started offering a five year tourist visa instead of one year visa so you we used our social platform to communicate to the customers and inform them in the in the phase one and this all these three phases inform inspire and initiate were actually not linear but are actually ha- happening simultaneously uh, the third example that you see on the right is again himachal saying it is allowed and open interstate travel with no restriction or no e pass so that so at, as part of the first phase of getting to start the conversation or building in in uh, confidence among consumer was the inform phase and it continues to happen on an ongoing basis now now thankfully almost all states within india are are open for travel we are still waiting for international announcement to happen but now that is sort of a uh, fading out when it comes to domestic tourism because this now india is almost open but we did this almost religiously in the last 4 or 5 months to continuously keep our consumers updated about every new uh, communication that was happening or every time there was a new update from any state tourism board the second thing was even if i mean while we were doing informing customers it was not enough because people as i said were 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 worried they, they there was a lot of fear among them so there was no dialogue about uh, travel or holidays happening so we did this event about i think two months ago uh, uh, and what we did was essentially it was a digital event uh, a one and a half month uh, uh, sorry one and a half hour ago uh, our event where we got uh, bamane rani who is actually a fantastic orator he is a great entertainer he sings uh, obviously talks a lot about movies but he is a great motivational speaker as well so we got him on board mm, we got atul khatri who is one of the uh, most popular stand up comic Uh, and we created a one hour event where the conversations are about so atul khatri did a, a 20 minute act uh, where he actually cracked jokes about how lockdown has treated him and how he's fed up and how uh, he's itching to get back uh, and start traveling again and the whole 20 minute act about and his jokes were all about this theme so essentially the whole idea was instead of going and trying to sell consumers a, a holiday again which they would not do again if i actually try to sell it that way but use the root of humor or use the root of entertainment to start the dialogue about travel again because obviously everything everybody we re- realize that people would relate to what lockdown has done to them in the last 6 months everybody is fed up with their doing their daily chores being being almost like jailed up in their houses and uh, baman who is actually a very very avid traveler he literally lived out of a suitcase uh, before before covid he also uh, spoke a lot and in his own entertaining and characteristic style about what lockdown has done to him and how he's again itching to get back to uh, travel like he used to do pre covid and then there was a chat between uh, uh, five fireside chat between baman and atul khatri so we we did this curated this event and the most interesting thing that we did was as part of this one hour one or a 90 minute event that we did we also took four or five of our best pack holiday packages uh, and we actually auctioned them this was like a punt that we tried to do uh we said let's see if 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 it actually gets sold so we started the bidding of of all these holiday packages on a live event for we and we started to sell them at a almost like a 50% discount uh but ultimately towards the end of it all four holidays got sold 
almost at a 90-95%, which is close to a sticker price of what we would have normally sold. So it was a great event. And, and actually, I've just shared uh, some of the numbers here. We started promoting that event a month ago, sorry, a week ago. We got uh, and we got people to register for it. So we got 10,000 plus registrations from our own consumer base, open market consumer base. We got more than five, 10,000 consumers who actually registered. Out of that 5,000 plus people literally attended the 90 minute event. Uh, and we obviously recorded it and then we put it across on our social platforms. The event, the video was watched by more than a black odd people uh, after it was posted on platform. But most importantly, than trying to sell what the, this event done is at least within our whole our base of loyal consumers uh, people who actually travel with thomas cook compost on a yearly basis we the whole idea or the as i said the objective was to start the dialogue about travel again and that happened because of this event and it was a and it was a great success in because we never expected 5,000 people attend an event like this for a, uh, and because we've not never done this before. And it's very nicely named, I must say. So really? it was an experiment which worked out to be really well. We called the event itself as Relive really the Dream. Sorry, sorry, yeah, uh, uh, the David. Dream. Very yeah, nicely yeah. named, you know, Relive the Dream. Yes, yes, yes. Because again, it was like, uh, we, I mean, we uh, the dreams were lost almost in the last seven or eight months and we wanted people to start living their dreams again and which is that the event itself was called really the dreams uh so uh, this was this was the the first probably initiative as i said I, as part of the inspire phase to bring back the conversations on travel the second thing that happened after as a follow-up to this event is people started traveling literally people started traveling and we've seen now in the last two months we have a good number of people who've already started traveling people are not just going traveling across india but people are dubai and maldives are the two destinations which are open so we have a good healthy number of people who are actually traveling to dubai who people who are traveling to uh, maldives we started recording Almost every customer, whoever was willing to, obviously not every customer was comfortable uh, uh, being a, a top, I mean, doing a, because these are videos, I, obviously I didn't, I, I didn't have the time or liberty to play those videos, but essentially we shot testimonials from each of these uh, customers of what holidays meant for them. Uh, what was their experience when they landed? The, as, you, as you see, the, the first on the left is, it's a, it's a gang of three women who actually traveled to Dubai. And it was their first holiday after lockdown, and we got them to talk about their experience about uh, about traveling post COVID, but also the safety aspect or what Thomas Cook was, how Thomas Cook was taking care of them uh, uh, from a safety point of view. The one that you see in the middle is people who uh, it's a, essentially Kabini uh, in Karnataka, a uh, family again went to travel, and likewise we had. We had tons and tons of these videos coming in where people are actually becoming our ambassadors and talking about how and what the first holiday post COVID meant and how Thomas Cook was taking care of this. The whole idea essentially being um, because we have a herd mentality and they say, I don't want to do it first. Every people said, I want to wait and watch. I will probably see if all things are going well. If a friend says it, if I see a friend traveling, then probably it inspires me to travel. So as part of the inspire phase, as I said earlier, we created heroes out of the first few people who actually traveled uh, after after lockdown. And these are some examples starting from some August and September that we've been and we continue to do that on an ongoing basis now. Uh, the last thing that we also did as part of the influencer, the uh, uh, and as part of trying to inspire people was we used influencers. Obviously, it's a very popular uh, way of uh, uh, in, in digital marketing. Now, almost every brand uses influencer at some point of time. But and and we used to do that uh, intermittently earlier. But I think what we realized in uh, post lockdown was as a brand, because I'm, I'm it's my it's my bread and butter. So when we tell people that it's safe and you can travel now, Again, people won't believe. Like I, in the Apollo example, if I tell it is safe, people won't believe. But when Apollo says, people will believe. Likewise, we get got influencers to travel, uh, and then they actually started building these conversations about travel again. Then tagging us, we got into a lot of these alliances with a lot of in, uh, popular bloggers, and they started writing about it, which again had its own impact. And people again, the dialogue about uh, on, uh, travel started happening again. 
um I, these were some of the as part of the last phase that i told about which is the initiate phase where we wanted to nudge people so as i said we introduced a 0% emi uh, policy uh, that we brought we also started creating occasions for people to travel i like uh, uh, gandhi jayanti was probably the first long weekend that came since march uh, so we created these occasions we created uh, birthdays we created anniversaries we created long weekends and we started promoting those uh, and reached out to our base of customers on their anniversary on their special days and so it was not just about financial nudge but we also created an occasion sort of nudge uh, for people to again think of traveling again and then i spoke about the the holiday card which we where we gave our 15% discount so these were some of the financial nudges that we were trying to do uh thankfully a lot of uh, um, um, the entire because the entire ecosystem itself is bleeding almost everybody is trying to revive the the tourism sector and the governments are putting their own efforts so there are great examples like maldives was one of the first and this is probably again never happened in the in the in the history of travel where the country itself has introduced a, a loyalty program so maldives is introduced some time ago a loyalty program where if you travel to maldives now you get a certain points and it gives you an incentive for consumers to come back to maldives again because you have already have earned points and you probably would prob travel to maldives again because you you have those points so it's also a unique examples of how governments or or destinations themselves were trying and doing a lot of things to get consumers back to their countries again uh, dubai again which is actually open for consumers or indian tourists for about a couple of months now uh they they they've been doing a lot of stuff including the ipl where uh, which is actually again uh, helping dubai as a destination itself but dubai has been communicating very very actively uh, they have their own uh, safety precaution this is a, this is again a video where dubai has communicated or or giving assurance to customers that we are ready we've taken as a country or a destination have taken all the necessary steps for you to have a safe holiday so we are ready whenever you are our government is also taking steps where they've got into a, an uh, an arrangement with almost 16 countries where there is completely uh, visa free entry for indian consumers so thankfully the entire ecosystem is trying to work together and and all this is again helping us to bring back the conversation or the confidence in people to travel again and after all this we, i mean i'm i started with this and i'm coming back to this slide again uh the red worm will hopefully the green is where it's a dotted line and this is a projected sign but we are seeing that the the two lines will hopefully merge very soon and that's what we are hoping for and i think that's what uh, we should be able to achieve in some time but that's what uh, essentially i want this is the last slide but ending on a positive or a note where i'm wishing that will probably be normal again that's it uh david that's wonderful uh, avinash it's very very interesting to see how you all used insight to be able to reassure people to get them to travel again and of course it took a lot of doing and uh, yeah yeah the tragedy is that uh, this whole thing happened during the peak holiday season the worst of it absolutely absolutely yes 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 as i said i mean uh, you could guess from the graph from march to june is these four months almost give us 60% of the business happens within these four months mm -hmm. but unfortunately happened between the peak but i mean I, i we can only do and so much about it so but let's see we are now banking on on diwali giving us the uh, another impetus christmas is coming up christmas and new year will probably compensate for what we've lost but it will take some time is what our sense is uh, for it to get back to pre covid times yeah so has cost of acquisition gone up during this time because uh, you have to really convince people to get going isn't it uh not necessarily uh, not necessarily as i said uh, because there is uh, there is so much of because I, uh, earlier the biggest bidding or the biggest war happened on, on google search and almost everybody from the smallest tour operator or the smallest even the travel agent mom and pop travel agent were actually bidding for it so the cost of acquisition has actually in a way reduced uh, for us in this period 
because not many people are even advertising for it i mean a lot of the entire ecosystem is almost washed washed up the small travel operators or small mom and pop uh, travel operators have literally shut shop even uh, shut shop even large regional brands whether they are in the west whether in the in the south have actually taken a position that we are not going to be back or we are not even opening stores till jan 2021 some of them have started opening now in september or october but a lot of the competition is non existent there are only a handful of players who are actually now actively going after acquisition otherwise everybody said we will only open when when the demand comes back so that way it is actually surprisingly and thankfully for us it is the cost of acquisition has not gone up but it is not because of uh, because of any other thing but because of maybe lack of competition uh, competition itself so the pie itself has got reduced but the number of players who are actually going after that pie also has gone down to a certain extent and obviously the cost of acquisition on social has always been a little more cheaper as compared to the google search because obviously a, a lead on a facebook or instagram will cost a little lesser than uh, the google search uh, historically and earlier it would not convert as well as the google search lead because the google search is the most potent uh, converting medium but now the leads that are coming via uh, social are also converting so which is why actually it is it is balancing out so cost of acquisition has not gone up okay though the conversion percentages have gone down to the point that you made which is which is actually correct it takes a lot of convincing so okay. earlier if my percentage conversions were about uh, upwards of 4% or now they were hovering around to 2.5% but luckily that's been uh, that's been of uh, balanced out because of the low cost of lead itself when uh, the lockdown started towards the end of march by then you must have yeah. already had a lot of bookings for the holiday season right how did Absolutely. you deal with the cancellations yeah so i think the first 3 months was again nightmarish because the first 3 months was all about satisfying consumers uh, about about their holiday a lot of them obviously mo- most of them couldn't travel now so we tried to balance it out with by giving away obviously whoever wanted to cancel uh, we cancelled and actually gave their money back the other thing that we also did is gave them future travel vouchers or credit notes in our parlance we call it future travel vouchers with an additional incentive with an additional interest in fact we gave them credit notes with an interest of the period that their money was with us and and we said whenever it out opens up you can travel in during that time or you can exchange it for if you had booked a european holiday you would probably exchange it uh, via your credit note for a domestic holiday so we tried to do that but i think the first 3 months was all about about this and uh, and we uh, try to refund wherever possible because it was not about just us because the airlines were also not giving away money because everybody stretched for cash the airlines were not returning money uh, and there were lots of ifs and buts so most of it happened in the last first 3 months but we as i said we try to balance it out with refunds as well as credit notes or future travel vouchers as we call it but we try to overcompensate our customers by giving them additional credit uh, for the kind of money that they had right the, you also have a very interesting uh, uh, format in the sense that uh, it's direct through e-commerce as well as through your agents across the country correct so did your agents survive this time or, or have you supported them or what have you done yeah so thankfully a lot of the agents who uh, franchises so first of all we were not very uh, our franchisee versus our own retail network was not very was evenly balanced not that we dependent because otherwise uh, most of other travel operators largely franchisee based but a large percentage of our stores are actually owned by us so that franchisee was relatively lesser and these are people who have been with us for because of the kind of heritage and lineage that we have most of the franchisees that we have are very were very solid so there is very percentage who have uh, gone out of business but we have been able to retain most of our franchisees so that's, thankfully it's, it's it's been it's not bad as of now at least so we've been able to retain most of the franchises barring a barring a, a couple of cases here and there but otherwise a large part of our distribution is actually intact as of now okay we have a question from joe uh, he wants to know he says you know we've seen banking insurance healthcare and retail have all undergone drastic changes and some of the change is going to be long lasting what about the hospitality industry what is your view 
yeah as i said it's going to take a long time for 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 the numbers or the confidence uh, to come back to what they were pre covid uh, but the good thing is uh, and we've seen this uh, in in other parts of the world itself uh, maybe china is a wrong example to quote but uh, the moment china opened uh, people throng on one single day they had 10000 people thronging onto one destination which is there so uh, and there is a new concept called revenge holidays uh, which people are talking about now because we all are fed up as long as uh, as long as uh, my financial disposable imp- uh, income is intact at this point of time we believe that it will come back with some amount of uh, with a not some with a lot of convincing and confidence building exercise and communication and and i think people are seeing that because even if you walk into any restaurant today if it is open uh, almost every sm- or even if it's you are walking into a salon uh, i we, you see the amount of protection that or safety thing that the people are doing so over a period of time i think in uh, and we've seen that uh, that uh, tipping point happen in the last one or two months where people have started stepping out the, most of most offices have now opened uh, so yeah. people are going to offices so the thing that we are seeing is that people see it as a long term phenomenon covid is here to stay and we have to learn to live with it uh, so uh, as long as we take care as a consumers i take care of, of myself and obviously i i whenever wherever i am going to um, I, as long as it's a reliable or a credible brand and we've seen that shift where people are choosing more and more uh, credible uh, brands i mean we've seen an increase in the number of people who opting for the taj marriott hiltons or ayats of the world just because they are perceived to be a little more uh, safer uh, so we've seen that shift happening uh, so th- i mean touch wood things should be back maybe in a, in about 6 months or so but obviously what how much percentage will it be pre covid i mean it's uh, everybody's guess is as good as mine but i think we are seeing the trend is at least positive in the last two months and we hope that will probably this festival period will give us a good boost okay this is uh, i think the wrong question to be asking a travel company uh, this is from uh, one of the attendees he says do you see airbnb coming back uh in fact it is yeah, yeah. in fact uh, i was reading about um, airbnb and how how their their model is evolving and and this is not airbnb is not very big in india that way but they are very big in, in other parts of the world especially europe and all where they are very very strong but uh, the uh, so there are there are actually two school of thoughts as i said earlier the the trend that we are seeing within thomas cook in india are people are gravitating towards more credible brands as i said taj marriott i don't want to stay in a hotel where i'm not i'm i'm not so sure of safety but i, I the moment it is a taj marriott and i know they are finicky about about uh, customer satisfaction and i'm sure they don't want uh, they want their customers to be safe and everybody have their own safety security measures people are gravitating towards more reliable and credible brands but at the same time uh, what we are seeing and read from all our partners across the world there people are gravitating toward towards airbnbs because especially airbnbs which are out of the city people are going out of because because they are secluded you stay in a once instead of a hotel room hotel where you are there are chances of you interacting or me, meeting and connecting with a lot of people you are more comfortable staying in air, airbnb because it's outside the city and you are the only person in that in that one little uh, room or a bungalow or or right. condo that you take about so that way there are two different phenomena that we see in india obviously that's not true we are seeing a large percentage of people opting for more credible hotels or hospitality brands but yes airbnb is seeing a little bit of revival only because of the fact especially if they are placed out of the city not within the city and right. holidays tend, generally tend to be outside of the city especially uh-huh. when we are going out so that way i think yes airbnb is here to stay i won't say airbnb is not i mean it will suddenly see a decline yeah you made a very interesting point in the beginning where you know people were not searching for travel in google at the beginning of the pandemic and during the worst time but were more active on social media platforms have you seen started seeing an uptick in terms of uh, searches on google now uh but yeah it's very steady it is very very steady we definitely from july onward we are seeing a on a month on month basis we are seeing 15 to 15 to 20% growth but it's at such a low base that is really uh, small at this point of time but there is a definite uptick uh, 
uh, uh, uh, in that search trend on an ongoing basis, month on month basis. There is a definite yeah. comeback. The other thing is, um, whilst people were more active on social media and those platforms, did you experiment with language communications on uh, social media platforms? Uh, not necessarily. Frankly, no. Uh, because I think most, uh, uh, almost every platform now offers the, the, the thing of translation. Uh, you can obviously you can't translate an image, but the copy could be translated. Uh, so we've not. Uh, I don't know. Maybe that's something that we should take out. But as of now, we didn't actually experiment with translation. Okay, Benny Ezekiel wants to know uh, what you expect from hoteliers to, you know, start inspiring travelers to come and stay. Are there any examples you can give? And second, uh, sorry, I, I, sorry, I lost you there. Uh, I just heard hoteliers. Uh, if you can repeat the question again. Yeah. What do, are you seeing anything from hoteliers in terms of inspiring people to travel? Yeah, yeah absolutely. I think all, at least all the large chains. Uh, so, for example, almost every large chain, and I give examples of Marriott, uh, Marriott, the uh, Accor Group. All of them have, like we've done with our safe travel program called Assured. Marriott globally has a, announced a program called Commitment to Clean, uh, where they are saying that th again they have a list of exhaustive safety protocols that they are doing. They have all changed their technology are adapted to use technology for checking where almost almost all chains or all hotels across the Marriott uh, now have a contact list checking. So you actually don't have to have any physical contact whenever you're checking in. Your room is actually sanitized in from most of the, in fact, the latest campaign if you've seen from Oyo, not Marriott is essentially they're saying we'll clean the room in front of you. Uh, so all hoteliers, everybody who's in their salt, uh, is doing something or other, uh, and almost everybody is doing that. Accor has uh, uh, the entire Accor group of hotels has come uh, with a, a program called All Safe. They call it as All Safe, uh, and and almost everybody is doing their bit uh, to with that. Apart from assurance of safety, I think everybody is doing even coming up with their own safety uh, financial schemes. And as you see, as of now, I think. Almost, it's a great time to holiday now from a financial point of view because almost every hotel is at a great discount unless it's on a weekend or it's a public holiday. So it's a it's a great time to buy a holiday financially at that point of view. And and almost everybody is doing their their bit, including the hospitality players. Okay, you talked about the COVID insurance uh, to reassure people about traveling. Um, is there is anybody giving any kind of a insurance post COVID? in terms of uh, any residual uh, uncertainties or dangers of infection, anything like that? No, but the, the, the insurance cover is only for the travel period that way. So no, no insurance company will cover you once you are back because the travel, because it's obviously that the policy is only insurance, travel insurance policy itself that we actually sell it along with the package. It only includes the duration. So if God forbid, if something happens while you are on a holiday till the time you come back, uh, it is covered. But after you come back, they won't cover you. I mean, that, that, that goes against the whole phenomenon of travel insurance itself. Yeah, yeah. What I meant was as long as the pandemic is lasting. This is from Benny Ezekiel. Mm. You know, he probably wants to know whether you're continuing with the COVID insurance during this time. Yes, absolutely. It is, it is, it is. Yes, yes. It is not only for the past. It will continue. And I don't think it is going any, anywhere for another uh, year or so. I think the, the plan as of now, what we've introduced is at least valid for next six months or so. Okay. Thank you so much, Avinash. I think that was a very comprehensive presentation and very insightful in terms of what it takes to reassure consumers at this point of time. This, like you said, is probably the toughest time travel has ever had in the yeah. last century, you know, other than 9-11, which is more for the airline industry. But travel okay. in general, I think uh, there's been nothing like this. And it's wonderful to see how you help focused and worked on what matters and we can see the line starting to go up again. Thank you very, very much for sharing those insights with us and all the best to you. We hope Thank that you. things will improve and I can tell you all of us are raring to travel. Okay. So yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll probably come back to you. Thanks Thank you. Thank you, David. Glad to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Thanks for having me. Thank you very much. See you soon. See you soon. Yes. Bye. 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 Over to you, Druhi. 
Thank you so much, Avinash and David, for that enlightening session. Uh, almost motivated to travel myself, knowing that there's a COVID insurance out there. Um, before we go on to our next session, we'll have another quick round of the quiz. If everybody can head to uh, slido.com and put in the event code DPL2020, and we can get started. While you're all joining in, some of you, if you can drop in your feedback for Mr. Avinash uh, Jinjari's session uh, from Thomas Cook. And if you can sign up meanwhile for the quiz as well. You can even scan the QR code on the screen. Just head to slido.com and then you can either scan the QR code or put in the event code DPL2020. A couple of you have joined in. We'll just wait for some of participants to join in. All right, let's get started. The first question is, which sector is leveraging on influencer marketing the most? Is it the consumer goods sector, the real estate sector, the BFSI sector, or the automobile sector? Ninety-three percent of you said consumer goods, and that's absolutely the right answer. Influencer marketing is being most widely used by the consumer goods sector. Moving on to the next question, which of these is untrue? Shorter videos work better on FB Instagram. Success via search engine optimization can be gotten in a short period of time. Mobile user experience and sticky buttons can play an important role in your landing page experience. A uh, cloud. Uh, telephony can help track calls via digital or all of the above. Which one is untrue? Most of you got it right. Success via search engine optimization cannot be gotten in a short period of time. It is a process which happens over two to three months or more. The third question is, what was the increase in data consumption post the launch of Geo. Was it 5x, 2x, 10x, or 18x? What was the growth in data consumption in India after the launch of Geo? Most of you said 10x, but the right answer is 18x. And that's a huge number. All right, so we can move on to our next session with Mr. Sunil Subramanian and David and Sunil, over to you. Hi, hi, Sunil. Uh, hi, 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 Sunil. A very warm welcome and good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Hi, Sunil. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Hi, 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 David. Glad to meet you. E meet you, as they say. Yeah. 